Welcome to this ASN Kidney 360 podcast. I am Susan Lois, Assistant Professor in the Department of Pharmacy Practice at the University of Sydney College of Pharmacy and Clinical Pharmacist at Mercy Health St. Anne Hospital in Toledo, Ohio. I'm here joined by Dr. Sumin Jane, Assistant Professor in the Department of Pharmacy Practice at Loma Linda University School of Pharmacy and Clinical Pharmacist at Loma Linda University Kidney Center. Today we will discuss my co-authored perspective entitled New Vancomycin Dosing Guidelines for Hemodialysis Patients, Rationale, Caveats, and Limitations, published in Kidney360 this August. Thank you, Sumin, for joining me to this podcast. Thank you for invitation. It is a pleasure to join you, Susan. What are the limitations of the previous guidelines for vancomycin dosing in hemodialysis patients? The previous guidelines didn't have any comment on how to dose vancomycin for hemodialysis patients due to limited evidence at that time. So various vancomycin dosing and monitoring protocols have been utilized to compromise the efficacy and safety of therapy. Unfortunately, hemodialysis patients remain one of the most challenging patient populations to provide optimal vancomycin therapy. I see. How do the new guidelines differ from the previous ones? What is the rationale for these changes? The new guidelines move away from trough-based monitoring and now recommend an area under the curve or AUC guided therapy. This is primarily due to significantly increased incidence of vancomycin-induced AKI with trough-based monitoring practice over the past decade. Accumulating evidence indicates AUC-based monitoring is a safer approach to reduce the risk of AKI. Studies have also identified the upper AUC target associated with AKI in addition to the previously known efficacy targets. Availability of several Bayesian dosing software also allowed the new guidelines to promote implementation of AUC-guided therapy. In addition, the new guidelines provide guidance on initial dosing and monitoring for special populations, including dialysis patients, and address several dialysis-related factors that can influence on vancomycin exposure. What are the limitations of the new guidelines? The new AUC targets determined in non-dialysis patients or a pre-dialysis concentration target, which is recommended as an alternative monitoring target for hemodialysis patients, have not been widely evaluated in outcome studies. Clinicians should note that the upper limit of AUC target associated with AKI may not be too relevant for hemodialysis patients, but too much of a drug exposure can cause other vancomycin toxicity, such as ototoxicity. The best target and monitoring strategies accounting for the unique challenges hemodialysis patients encounter are still unclear. Also, some recommendations may not be practical to follow in many places, especially in outpatient dialysis centers. But if impl- implemented, it may vary based on the available institutional resources. That makes sense. How would the vancomycin dosing be adjusted in hemodialysis patients using a low flux dialyzer? That's a good question. A low-flux dialyzer does not remove a relatively big-sized drug like vancomycin as much as high-flux dialyzer. Available data suggests that about a 30% smaller dose compared to the recommended dose for high-flux dialysis be given in patients receiving a low-flux dialysis treatment. This is also aligned with the new guideline recommendation. In conclusion, The new vancomycin guidelines now recommend AUC-guided therapy. For many logistic issues and a lack of data, challenge its implementation in hemodialysis patients. Initial dosing and an alternative monitoring recommendations for hemodialysis patients would provide benefits, yet have limitations clinicians should consider. 
Thank you for joining us for the Kidney 360 podcast. This podcast is copyrighted by the American Society of Nephrology, all rights reserved. All content in this podcast is for informational purposes only and is not intended to be medical advice. This podcast should not be used in a medical emergency or for the diagnosis or treatment of any medical condition. Please consult your doctor or other qualified health care provider if you have any questions about any medical condition or before taking any drug, changing your diet, or commencing or discontinuing any course of treatment. Thank you for listening to this podcast from the American Society of Nephrology.